Right, we are getting to know our trainers, and Johnny Portman's very kindly given up uh, an hour of his time to go through these questions. Um, and Johnny, thank you very much for talking to us. So um, we've got a handful of questions so our members can get to know you. Why did you become a racehorse trainer? I'm not very clever and there wasn't much else I could do really, but um, I, I was, I, I got an uncle who's a trainer, Henry Candy, so I, my grandfather was a trainer when I was young. Oh, so genetically there's, yes. a, there's a fair bit uh, there, isn't And it? I was brought up on a farm surrounded by pointer pointers and Arabians and um, I was captivated very early on and when I was at school I ignored all careers advice and careers lectures because I knew that I wanted to be a trainer and that was the path I took uh, without deviation. How old were you then when you first, sorry I'm deviating from the questions, so what, what age did you jump this into the racing game then and become an assistant to someone or a... Uh, I went to Sirencester because I was either going to be a farmer or a trainer and I loved farming and I went to Sirencester and I was riding at the time as an amateur rider and I fell off at the open ditch at Folkestone. My father, who trained the horse, was disappointed <laughs> about that, said to Tim Forster, who was standing next to him, would you take my boy on? His riding needs a bit of help. Tim Forster said, I like a challenge, but I don't want that one. <laughs> uh, so I went back to driving my tractor at home until there was a call one day from the captain saying to my father, that boy of yours, I could do with a laugh. I think I'd take him on after all. So the rest is history. The rest is history. I was, I was in racing and that's where I stayed. Brilliant, brilliant. Question two then, how many years have you been training? I think 20 years. 20, 20 years? This is my 21st year. Okay, wow. Um, what would be the best horse do you think you've ever trained? Uh, it would be a close call between two fillies, Mrs. Danvers, of course, who was unbeaten as a two-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she won over 200,000 in prize money, unbeaten, broke the track record at Newmarket. Um, and Anecdote, who gave us our first Royal Ascot winner, and she won a Group 3 and we sold her to America. Um, but uh, Mrs. Wernerson probably just, uh, uh, Mrs. Danvers, did I say Mrs. Danvers, uh, is, would come out on top just simply because she was unbeaten yeah. and gave us a huge thrill and she answered every, you know, we plotted her campaign to the letter and she answered every call. Brilliant. Um, what would be your favourite race course do? Newbury. Newbury. Uh, who is your racing idol? Well, he's dead now, sadly, but Henry Cecil. Very good uh, answer. I thought he just was marvellous to watch around his horses on the gallops, lucky enough to work in Newmarket, and I saw him on the gallops, spoke to him a few times. Um, I know he wasn't, you know, he had his quirks, but uh, great for racing, and he would, would have been my hero. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Right, we're going slightly um, off racing now. Um, your favourite film? I think War Horse. Very good choice, very good choice. Uh, your favourite meal? Well, uh, on account of my appearance, anything I can find really, anything I can get my hands on. I love all food. Um, what about your favourite drink then? Uh, washed down by a nice crisp white Chardonnay. Perfect. And finally... Um, French. French Chardonnay. Uh, dinner party. Get three dream uh, guests to your to your to the to the dinner party. I think Boris Johnson and Michel Barnier and David Cameron could wait on them and see <laughs> how they get on. <laughs> Johnny, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much. Okay.